Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin James from Scalp Micropigmentation Australia and welcome to another five minute fast facts on scalp micropigmentation, the pro artist series where we're interviewing some amazing scalp micropigmentation artists from around the world, getting their tips and tricks on how you can get the most out of your scalp micropigmentation transformation. So today we uh, today's guest makes a statement, wherever he goes, he's loud, fun and loves networking and loves being involved at the many SMP conferences that we've held over the years. He has great information to share about scalp micropigmentation and was a part of the Finishing Touches group for many years as an educator. He won Best UK Artist in 2019 at the Team Micro Awards and the same year was also a finalist for Best UK Clinique at the World Scalp Micropigmentation Awards in Orlando, Florida. He's been a finalist uh, for his results in 2017, 18 and 19 at the MP UK Awards in London. Today we are speaking with the one and only Craig Bottomley High from Scalp Micro UK. Welcome. Hi, how are you doing? Good, thank you so much for joining us. Cool, thanks for the introduction. That was uh, it's quite an introduction. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> You've achieved a lot. I like that. I'll pay, I'll pay you the money later. <laughs> That's what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> you never see it. Yeah. Uh, all right, so take us through your experience of getting scalp micropigmentation. Um, how long ago was it and how did you first find out about SMP? Uh, okay, I, whew, so I'll try and sort of put it into a nutshell. Um, I had been, uh, I'd been in the micropigmentation business in 2010. I've been doing everything from eyebrows to scar cover work, a few tear, a few e. Um, I'd looked at it at the time years ago and wanted it doing, but the results weren't fantastic. Colors weren't great. Hairlines looked dreadful. Um, so it was at the back of my mind. I knew I wanted it. Um, and as you mentioned, working uh, with Finishing Touches, I got introduced to Matt um, and got him to do my head. I knew that I wanted to have it done, knew he was one of the best at the time. I'd done my research. That was it. I was hooked. Um, I trained with Matt and now I work very closely with Matt. I mean, this was going back, well, 2016 was, so what, four years, going into five years, um, and knew that was something I wanted to focus on more. And now, you know, I, I got my clinic four years ago and so like completely focus on SMP, um, purely because I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, how I felt, you know, I was a guy reaching a certain age um and just you know i had the typical norwood seven and it really did make me feel different it i was always loud anyway but it just gave me that confidence i thought if that works for me then surely this has got to work for someone else and and it does <laughs> yeah brilliant Absolutely. Yeah. so why did you decide to enter the whole um the pigmentation um cosmetic tattooing smp why did you decide to enter that in the beginning what were you doing beforehand and, and how did you transition over it was um it was quite funny uh, at the time my partner at the time went to get her eyebrows done many many years ago and and came out and i looked at them and they didn't look quite even. They looked very dark. And I'd been a, I'd run a design business for, for many, many years prior to that. And I was still running it at the, at the time. And so art's always, art and design's always, and symmetry has always been something I've been, you know, quite anal about, quite OCD about. Anyway, when, when I saw them, I thought they don't quite look right. I thought I could do better than that. Mm -hmm. And so I took the money I put in the bank and invested. And so I went and trained with FTG. Um, did eyebrows and everything like that and thought this is quite good and start ended up being about 16 clinics first sort of guy doing brows and things but you know women are quite demanding when it comes to their brows you know one stroke here one stroke there and it became a process it was just I was just like a robot just doing eyebrows and eyeliner mm -hmm. and I, I think I was losing the passion and that's when I looked more into doing the SMP um and and i think if you have that much passion for anything then you know that's it for you if it becomes a job which that was becoming mm -hmm. um i wasn't enjoying it it was you know i i dreaded mondays look forward to fridays mm -hmm. now i work seven days a week well not currently but i work seven days a week so there is no you know i don't find it as a job it's not a job yeah i'm sure you you, you understand that it's not it's not a job it's something you really, it's yeah it's fantastic it's a, it's a hobby <laughs> 
<laughs> Brilliant. All right. So where, um, where are your locations? Uh, where can clients find you? And when you were choosing those locations, what were you looking for? Um, originally, it sounds really silly. I, I, I had this idea that I wanted a converted barn. <laughs> That's mm. what I wanted. I had to have barn doors and I had this vision of people pulling up a nice driveway and loads of parking. Um, they're hard to come by. <laughs> it took me 18 months to, to look around, couldn't find it. Uh, what I eventually found was probably about 15 miles from my house, um, right in between some of the main motorways. Uh, it's like a, it's down from a big junction point and I'm right in between Heathrow and Luton Airport. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's an old converted school. Uh, and I've got what used to be the gymnasium part. So I've got barn doors mm. that open up to a big car park. It's di direct sunlight all hours of the day. So new, when I walked, I saw three of the units in that building. One had a low ceiling, one was quite dark. And when I walked into that one, it's got parquet wooden flooring, white walls. It was brilliant. It was perfect for what I wanted. So it had the, the position, situation, um, and just everything about it even when people walk in, they say, this is so inviting. It's an old school. You feel like you're thrown back to your school days. Yeah. Um, and that's based just outside London. When I say just outside, probably about 17, 18 miles outside. Uh, we're in Hertfordshire, which is one of the home counties. Um, I also have use of clinics in Manchester and Leeds and also down Swansea uh, in the Wales because I was finding a lot of clients were traveling to me um, and it was easy for me sometimes to do a day here, a day there and for them to come to that clinic. Yeah. Although I do prefer everyone to come to me at my clinic for their first session. So they get to meet me and realize I'm established. It's not just a white room. I'm going to be there for more years to come. All right. So today let's focus on the importance of the consultation. You tend to be very successful of, of turning consultations into treatments. Um, why do you feel you convert so many people over? Um, I think it's, it's just being honest with them, just being honest. You know, um, we are the professionals. They will come to us and we will guide them, handhold them almost through most of it. They'll, you'll have someone that's done a lot of research, knows everything about it, and they just want to be told sort of the key minor facts. Or you get someone that knows nothing about it. Um, it's also, as you know, when you've seen me at some of these conferences, there's three main facts that I think win me the, the points. I call it the key to the consultation, to winning the consultation. The K from the key is, is knowledge. It's, it's understanding what they want and telling them what they can have. Um, you, if they come in and say, I want a hairline like this and they're 45 years old, you need to say, look, you know, what are your friends going to say about it? What, what's the public perception going to be if you have a hairline like that? I'm not going to want to do that because at the end of the day, you're going to be an advertisement for me. Uh, it's also about um, your ethics. You know, uh, if someone's just been somewhere and being quoted, you know, uh, 2000 pounds and you go, all right, fine, I'll do it for 1800 quid, just come on, 1500 quid. They don't want to hear that. I don't want to drop my price. It's my, my, my value of work stays where it is. But the biggest thing, the, the E, the other E is, is empathizing and not sympathizing. That's where people get it wrong. Um, if a client comes in and they tell you their backstory of why they're having it, it's, it's done. With me, I find it sanity or vanity. I know it's to pigeonhole it, but a lot of clients come in because they just want to feel better. They've got to my age or, or older and they just want to, you know, feel a little bit younger and look a bit healthier. And I put that in the vanity side. I'm not being vain, but it's the vanity side. It's something where it just wants to make you feel better. Um, the sanity side of people that have been through all hair system, hair transplants, alopecia sufferers, that need it you know they've been bullied at school it's their life hasn't been they haven't lived it to the full and mm -hmm. having a treatment like this would explain it to them why it would work for them yeah so i think combining all of those the also with the empathy and the sympathy mm -hmm. i've uh, people have said to me that they've spoken to client to to clinics and they've gone oh yeah you're bald or this you know don't worry i can i can solve that problem mm -hmm. now as a guy don't tell me I've got a problem that you're going to solve. I don't, I, you know, I know there's something there, but it's not a problem. It's a situation I'm in. So it's empathizing. Don't say, oh, you're a bald guy. I can help you with your problem. Empathize saying, I understand what you're going through. I understand this. And, and, and there's a massive difference between those two words. And, and I think a lot of clinics, a lot of newer technicians don't understand that. You do pick it up after seeing a lot of clients and, mm -hmm. and having consultations with them. But honesty is the big thing. Just be honest. Tell them what they can expect, what they should expect from it. 
Yeah, brilliant. And you've been quoted saying um, that consultations are by far the most important part of the whole SMP process. Why do you think that is? Um, I think, I mean, as well as the treatment, obviously, if you get the treatment, do the treatment well, that's a major life changing thing for them. But the consultation is, is finding out what they're going to expect. Um, also, there's a little bit of psych evaluation there as well. We all talk about red flag clients. Um, you know, should we be doing this client because... And, and I've turned, I'm sure you have, you turn, turn clients away. It's not all about the money. It really is. If you think that person, you know, isn't... That they look at this as like the, the chalice, the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Having this treatment will solve their life problems solve their you know everything their marital problem problems everything because they think oh i'm going to look younger and more they're going to fancy me more yeah you're going to feel better but it isn't going to resolve any situations that are the deep set up there so it is a bit of psych evaluation um and, and I, I talked previously about it with um, you know maybe doing courses in understanding you know the mind the way it works mm -hmm. it's, it's it is about building that rapport with the client um you're making a connection I, I often uh, make a comparison about, you know, someone wants to spend £2,000 on a television set, they do their research in two different places. Now, if a guy goes in and just says, there's your television, it's really big and really nice and the pitch is fantastic. If you go to another guy and he talks to you and involves you and tells you about the pixelation and why the resolution and, you know, makes you think more about it, the difference in price may only be a couple of hundred quid, but if you go to someone that shows they're passionate and they understand what they're talking about, you make a rapport with them, you make a connection. I will buy from someone that has made a connection to, to, to me. They don't, it doesn't mean they're not, they've been rude, but if I feel they've made time in their day to speak to me and give me a bit of knowledge we've discussed, then do the same with the client. You know, listen to what they want to do, what they're expecting, mm -hmm. how it's going to make them feel. You, you know if you can make a difference. You see it and they feel it. And, and so many people have said to me, cl uh, clients have said in the consultation, I can see you've got a passion for it. Mm. And that, that oozes from me. They feel great with that. All right. And tell us, um, what do you want your clients to walk away feeling after a consultation? Um, exhilarated. Fantastic. Um, Re-energised. Uh, I, I use the hashtag get your swagger back. Yeah. They do get their swagger back. <clears throat> I, during the consultation, I will tell the client that after their first session, um, I'm going to get them to walk up to that big mirror you've seen in my clinic and so many of my reveal videos. And they are going to either, what I call the 17 degrees of confidence. It's a 17 degrees thing. I, I lecture it about everyone. It's about, they look at the mirror for the first time and they lean back 17 degrees. It's a confidence thing. If you stand and lean back, it's a confidence. You see them look at themselves in a slightly different way. They scan themselves from top to bottom. And occasionally they'll put their hands in their pockets or play with their beard like this. It's a self-adoration. It's the first chance they've got to actually like and adore themselves after having a treatment. They've been consciously thinking about being bald or being thinning for, for so long. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, boom, I've done something where they look at themselves and, and you know, they'll pop the collar. They do this and you can see it in their eyes. The capturing that on those videos is, is incredible. Yeah. But, you see it in it you see it, in it and especially when they come back and they've got a new outfit you know they, they're no longer this little wolf out this little guy that didn't want the attention didn't want to wear a loud shirt because he was bald it sounds silly but so true suddenly they come in in a loud shirt and a jacket and you know they're walking in like this with swagger and that's what i want to give them their swagger back yeah and and that's the big thing seeing the reveal the mirror the, the, the mirror is the main thing yeah love it when should a client perhaps look at getting a second opinion? Say they've been for a consultation. Um, what sort of warning signs or key points should they look out for perhaps that they shouldn't go and get a second consultation? Um, a, a lot of times when people have come, I mean, where I'm based, being just outside London, I find that people, will, if they're travelling down or travelling in from somewhere, will maybe go to a few of the London clinics first some of the big brands and then they come out back out of the country and come to me and then go to someone else so i will ask where they've been who they've been who they've been seen one thing is i've learned is is understanding where they've been never 
slag off another practitioner. I never say something bad about it. I've had it where someone's been somewhere, then come to me and they said, oh, they said you're going to be well overpriced, Craig, or, you know, and you think, you know, appreciate who they are. They're all, they're all, there are some damn good practitioners up and down the country and around the world. We all know them. They're very good at what they do. So as far as consultation, it's their consultation may be good. They may be, uh, they, they might have been slightly overpriced. You know, we know that there's a sort of area where the pricing should be. If it's a thousand pounds over, then yeah, people are going to look for another consultation. If they come to me and tell them, tell me they're price orientated, I'm not going to be dropping prices to match. They have said to me, I went somewhere and they told me 2000 and then during the conversation, they dropped it down to 1800 and 1700 and 1500 and 1200 if they use a special booking code now and, and if they book with them today and dropped it almost double the, at half the price. I won't do that. That's devaluing my work and my, and my uh, you know, my, my ethics, more than anything else. Um, there are little things that if they feel uncomfortable about, if they, when they went in, maybe it didn't, I always joke about having vanilla essence in my clinic. It's yeah. a calming, relaxing, we, we joke about it. Yeah. Everyone knows I talk about that. Um, but it's true. If you feel relaxed, it takes you back to the old days of getting an ice cream and feeling happy and relaxed. And, and you know, it's a relaxing um, scent to have. If you walk in and it smells of cigarette smoke or in their, in their visual line, they can see a dirty kitchen or dirty mugs or, you know, dirty windows. Anything like that, it's going to make them think, you know, I want to spend my money wisely. And especially now, hygiene, this current situation of hygiene uh, is paramount. Um, I make sure that where they sit down, they see the positive things. They see good views out the window, clean windows. They see my certificates, my insurance on the wall. You know, mm -hmm. these things are good things that uh, the client wants to see. They don't want to see just a white room that they've hired 25 pounds to, to sit in and have a consultation done. So it's the environment as well. I think you, we talked uh, before about gut, gut feelings. If it yeah. didn't feel right, don't go there. Yeah. You know, look for another consultation. I'm, I'm happy they do two or three consultations. I'm happy then when they say they've chosen me. It means I'm doing something right. It's about mm -hmm. making the connection. If you say, if, they, if you just look like they were making pound notes, then get another consultation. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's certainly, I think the biggest thing is, like you said, the relationship. Um, you know, perhaps if, mm. if, if they feel like their artist was not listening to them about what their needs and their expectations are, or like you mentioned earlier, is, uh, you know, being the best practitioner that will just do the, the hairline that the client wants, but it's not you know going to suit them well into the future i think all of those things are warning signs um that they're really not being looked after well by the practitioner yeah yeah i i agree i mean i always talk um during the consultation i talk about uh making the hairline age appropriate mm -hmm. um you know getting the right hairline if, if a client's trying to dictate to you too much about where it should be Sometimes they can be a red flag. You know, if you don't think it's going to be right for an advertisement for your company, then don't do it. Um, I also talk about public perception. It's, you know, a, a, if someone did do that straight hairline and they went straight to work and then everyone at work just said, what have you done? What have you done? It's not good for your business if they've done that. So if, it, if it's future proofed as well, what's it going to look like in five years time? Guide the client make that bond when they say you say well i think we should reset it back slightly raise your eyebrows up we can always add on the next couple of sessions mm -hmm. then they feel you know they, they come in and say i, I want a very soft hairline yeah. everyone will say it but it, the variation of a soft hairline recess to this to a lot of people are the same thing mm -hmm. it's about making as you say the bond um and thinking about other people outside because I, I often get them to bring their partners with them um, so they can sit and I can talk to both of them at the same time because men cherry pick answers. If they ask me something, they go back and tell their wife, say, he says this and he says that. When they're there or they you know, say their wife could be their partner, mm -hmm. um, they get to listen about what, what they're expecting and for them to understand about public perception. This isn't, this isn't a 300 pound pair of jeans that, if you go out and someone says, those jeans look terrible on you, or your ass looks big in those jeans, this isn't like that. This is a treatment. This is a tattoo. This mm -hmm. is pigment placed under the skin. This is on your head. 
Mm -hmm. This isn't just a take it back and get a refund that we're talking, you know, laser or we're talking about removal of some form. So the decision has to be made where they feel and understand that you are, you know, explaining to them what they want to hear. You want to talk about soft hair lines, gradual process, adding over the, the, the treatments over the, the sessions. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, well, thank you so much for chatting to us today, Greg, about um, the, the okay. importance of the consultation process um, in the SM yeah. journey for many of the clients. Um, it is very important to, to get it right at the consultation and make sure your practitioner understands um, what it is that you're wanting. So thank you so much for sharing your tips and tricks today, Craig. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Lovely. Good to catch up. I know. I know. And um, thank you so much for being on the five minute fast facts on scalp micropigmentation, the pro artist series. Um, I'm sure you've helped someone out there watching who's um, maybe a bit nervous about booking a consultation. So hopefully they feel a little bit better after watching this. And as yes, always, I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you have any questions or comments, we want to hear from you. So as always, don't be shy. Give us a call or an email. Pop something in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any updates as we release our latest content. So thanks so much again, Craig, and we hope to see you soon. Pleasure. I hope so too. I will see you at the next meeting whenever, wherever, when this uh, eventually pandemic clears. <laughs> Absolutely. See you Thank then. You. See you then. Bye.